Infrared spectroscopy is useful in identifying organic and other compounds. The reason is that the various regions of an infrared spectrum are characteristic of various chemical parts. Okay, let's take a look at what we mean by that. So here is a, a typical infrared spectrum analysis. What we have here is frequency. Frequency, uh, or actually it's inverse uh, wave number. So this is not frequency, but wave number. Uh, this goes from 5000 to 650, which is interesting because usually when you plot graphs, uh, they start from a low value and increase as you go here. But for probably historical weave, uh, reasons, uh, it's just reversed for infrared spectroscopy. So regions over here are low wave number, low frequency, low energy, whereas regions over here are high frequency or high energy. But anyway, this region, uh, the cutoff is around 1500 or this graph is about 1250. The ones to the left of that and the higher energy here, those correspond to various groups in a uh, compound. For example, if you have a carbonyl group, you'll expect to have some sort of absorption in this region of the spectrum. And uh, if you have like CH, OH, NH, those would be down here. So those are characteristic of fun functional groups up here. Now below 1500, or according to this, um, 1250, you have regions which are particular for a particular molecule. So this is called the fingerprint region. Each molecule will have a almost unique characteristic down here in the fingerprint region, whereas molecules that have the same chemical group, for instance carbonyls, all molecules have a carbonyls, well most molecules might have a absorption here, but down here those carbonyls will be um, distinguished from the different by the different molecules. For example, uh, here is the spectrum of uh, one propanol up here, this is the spectrum of one propanol, and here this is the spectrum of two propanol. So you see both have this characteristic OH, so if one just uh, region here, so if one just looked at this region of the spectrum above 1500, one might have difficulty distinguishing between one propanol and two propanol. However, if you look at the fingerprint region below 1500, it's clear that one propanol has a much different fingerprint than two propanol. So this region is useful for identifying compounds if you have uh, the uh, infrared spectrum of the pure compound, you just sort of match. And chances are that uh, only a particular compound will have a particular spectrum here, so you have a pretty good one-to-one -one match. On the other hand, if you're interested in just seeing what kind of groups you have, this uh, non-fingerprint, this functional region is useful. So that is um, various regions of the IR spectrum, characteristic of chemical moieties. You have a fingerprint region, which is characteristic of one-to-one -one correspondence, usually to a uh, chemical compound. More about uh, how to use infrared spectrum to analyze compounds is covered in organic chemistry. One final point, it's really impossible to isolate vibrations of a single group of molecules. Uh, for example, if one looks at, for instance, this region here, you say, oh, this must be a carbonyl group. But yeah, but really it's just not the carbonyl that's vibrating. Other molecules are, or other atoms in the molecule are also vibrating at that frequency. It's just that the amplitude of this vibration is much larger than all the others. So you're uh, justified in saying, well, this is mostly due to the carbonyl. Well, just let's actually uh, see that. Here I uh, have the structure of formaldehyde, the carbon, double bonded oxygen, and then two hydrogens here. And I've computed the infrared spectrum. And let's see what this looks like. Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six normal modes. Is that correct? Well, we have four atoms in the molecule. Four times three is 12. This is not linear, so we subtract six, and we get six normal modes. So it looks like this is uh, calculating OK. And I don't know if you can sort of see that. That is a, a peak right there. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the uh, chemistry program is saying, oh, um, there are six peaks in this. And actually, I don't know if you can see this on the screen, but down here gives a symmetry, or the irreducible representation, of each normal mode. So just let's step through that. 
It's B1, B2, A1, 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 or B2. So you have A1s and B2s. Note that this is formaldehyde is a C2V, C2V point group, and we just said we have only A1s and, uh, B, sorry, B1, B2, and A1. Those are the three irreducible representations corresponding to the six normal modes. Okay, well, let's just see. A1, yes, that's infrared active. B1 and B2 are also infrared active. So we would expect of the six normal modes a maximum of six infrared um, absorption spectra. Okay, and that's what uh, Hypercam is, is telling us here. All right, let's take a look at the uh, motions here. So if we apply uh, this, there is the one normal mode. This has B1 irreducible symmetry. And you see what is moving, one, two, three, four, all four atoms are moving. If we go to um, a website which purports to uh, identify things like that, all right, so here we have uh, this is called a C2 WAG, and let's see, that's identified as a C2 WAG. So these atoms, as we saw in Hyperchem, yes, that's um, that was wagging there, so yeah, that's right. But really, it's not just the CH2 that's moving, it's also the oxygen. So in general, you can't, or technically, you can't just isolate a vibration to a particular part of the molecule because if just that part moves, you have to have another part move in order to maintain the center of mass to be constant. Just keep that in mind, although if you, if you look at the amplitudes here, you'd say, oh, most of the vibration is due to this C2 wag, wagging motion here. So that's uh, useful stuff if you're interested in analysis of compounds, use infrared spectroscopy.